Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy Newsbeat Daily Stand-Up. This is the weekend edition. It is a summary of all of the greatest stories that Michael and I covered this week. It has been absolutely bonkers. Today is Saturday. I hope everybody had a fantastic July 4th weekend. Sit back and enjoy the best of the stories. We are absolutely living in some wild times. I hate using unprecedented this is beyond unprecedented. And uh, if you are looking for condensate, uh, oil and gas, crude, uh, jet fuel, uh, shoot a note and uh, go to uh, energynewsbeat.co forward slash uh, trading desk. And uh, we want to jump out and help you out. So, hey, with that, enjoy the show. Hey, let's start with our buddies over there in China. You can't buy this kind of entertainment, Michael. China surpasses Europe in per capita energy consumption. Quote, this is out of the article. China has changed the energy world, but now China is changing the International Energy Agency, the IEA, the IEA reported in their 2030 flagship world outlook, the second largest economy in the world has saturated its own market after years of building roads and buildings and other infrastructure as fast as it possibly could. The vast Chinese domestic market is finally about tapped. Here's where it gets really, really crazy. If the fact that the deindustrialization of the Europe because they have gone to renewables, has really impacted this number. So it's not just a, oh, by the way, China is increasing the per capita of energy mm -hmm. use. It is because Germany is de-industrializing because of their energy policies. Here's a, a line in here that just really will whack you upside the head. Quote, we cannot, we should not ignore the energy and emissions that the Europeans have effectively exported to Chinese manufacturers. Energy Institute Chief Executive Officer Nick Wyeth recently told Bloomberg, if a decline in energy consumption and emissions in Europe simply boosts carbon output somewhere else, policies to tackle global, global climate change aren't working. Well, you know what? All of the manufacturing of the pollutants for wind and solar are made in China. They're increasing all of the profits, and then they're using that to build their their standard of living and everything else. This is just a scam as the whole thing. Well, I mean, again, as I said, shocker here, China's starting to use more energy. I mean, it, it, when, with, when you have population that's increasing like China has... You know, obviously, we know they they they've dropped a little bit off what they were doing back when they had the one the one child policy. But relative to what Europe, Europe is flatlining when it comes to policy. So this is just a matter of population. I do think this comes down to, you know, now why China is just getting as much energy as possible. It's why they're going back to coal. It's why they're diving headfirst into all this stuff. It's because they know their energy demand is going to be going through the roof. And they are still stockpiling oil and natural and natural gas LNG, and they have new pipeline contracts, and all that is a precursor to war. Yeah. So, Supreme Court overturned Chevron decision curtailing federal agencies in major power shift in the Chevron decision. This is an amazing 80-year story of overreach by our government. This is a total ability for the next administration to clean out the deep state in many ways. How? The, the Chevron, the Megan Lap with Seafreeze Fisheries is going to be on David Blackman's energy question on July 3rd. And I had the chance to interview her a little while ago as well. The Chevron decision was about the overreach of the government forcing inspectors on boats and they were having to pay their salaries their health insurance and everything else. And it was coming around to about $700 a day on a small boat. That's a lot of money for a small family boat that was overreaching. So the decision basically says if the law is poorly written, Michael, it used to, the, the, the decision was when you filed under this defense, you had to say, well, then it all defaults or all ties 
go to the state, go to the federal government. And that means that you really had to go all the way to the Supreme Court every time you wanted to fight this, yep. the, the government. Now, an appellate court can solve the problem. This is huge for the consumers because now the appellate courts can do it. So, man, vote for your local judges. Yeah. It's that's the big thing I was going to say. I think you guys, David Blackman did a great, great job on the three podcasters breaking this all down. So I, I've got really not much to add is yes, local politicians are and specifically local judges are going to be critical if you care about this type of stuff, because that's exactly what you it's what the Supreme Court said. Kick it back down. We don't have to rule on this stuff now. Oh, absolutely. And and so we are recording this on a Sunday evening and we don't know, you know, uh, the fallout from that debate is still going to be seen because if Biden, if Jill Biden still wants him to run is going to be, you know, is he going to be asked to step down? Is she want to even say yes? Who is going to step in? Is it going to be Michelle Obama? Is it going to be Hillary? Is it going to be Gavin Newsom? How are they going to pay off? You know, but all that, all of this is just in the, in the up in the air about energy policies, Michael. This is the biggest impact of energy policies I have ever seen in an election. Well, because the problem with having government agencies create policy is every four years you get a new agency and every four years you get a new you get a new direction oh, yes. and you get a new change and it really is hard to plan it's one thing we're going to talk about when we get to the dallas fed survey the tech industry want to lock up nuclear power for ai michael this one has got amazon and then the next one is google so you can't beat an amazon google tag team on our stories no. here the owners of roughly a third of the U.S. nuclear power plants are in talk with tech companies to provide electricity for new data centers needed to meet the demands of artificial intelligence boom. Amazon, this is amazing. Constellation Energy, a 2.91 increase upcoming triangle. Amazon, uh, it's unbelievable. In a subsidiary purchased a nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania, we covered for 650 million bucks. And when you sit back and take a look at it, the AI demand is looking at between these two articles. I'll go into the other one here in a sec pushing out renewables and they're going to be putting in contracts for nuclear power and then buying only the renewable when they need the credits that's going to destroy the grid for the consumer <laughs> oh yeah the grid for that's the first thing i thought it was like we're in trouble then it is. And so you're going to, this is the new interest in nuclear is just unbelievable. In this Maryland nuclear power plant, it's pretty amazing. Share, let's see here. The customer has to come to us with many of the industry says, I'll need as much as power as you can make available, said Vistas <laughs> Energy Chief. Huh. AI is going to take over the grid. You're seeing this. I mean, Amazon wants as much capacity. Just wait till they start buying old rundown new. When does a tech company buy Diablo Canyon? Oh, if it's going to be decommissioned, why would you not buy it as a tech company? Are you allowed to? Well, you, that's a whole nother animal because if it becomes decommissioned, I think we're going to see the decommissioned start being recommissioned. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it would actually happen. Just an interesting, just an interesting thing. But yes, the all big tech, they're, they're coming for the power and they're going to get it at all costs. So what's funny oh. is now we'll actually see, you know, if if Amazon needs upgrades to the grid. Well, guess what? Amazon's probably going to get upgrades to the grid. So it could right. be. It could be a great thing overall. But they're only going to get them into microgrids that they can afford for Good their point. thing. And, and so let me throw this at you here. Hunt, the Federal Regulatory Commission, also Amazon's deal in Pennsylvania, as much as $140 million in additional cost for the grid could go to the consumers. The consumers are getting that. Wow. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Chinese coal terminals bursting at the seams. This port storage is bursting at the seams, and it appears unlikely that seaborne air rivals will be absorbed unless end users begin direct directing coal inland. Part of this is because they had more rain than they expected, so their mm -hmm. hydro was able to pick in. 
but they're still stockpiling oil, natural gas, LNG, everything yep. that they can. And they've now got several new pipelines that they are working out with the Russians. China's top three sources for coal this year, Indonesia, Australia, and the Russia Federation, are where they are importing from. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, they're, they're, they love their energy. They'll get it in any form that they want. Yes. Now, here's the funny part, Michael. Okay. China is pushing electric cars on its population at a tremendous rate, he said, noting how taxes had been skewed to favor cars that do not rely on imported oil. I'll be this turns Bush's demand for coal fire powered electric usage. Hey, it'll be interesting to see. They're going to be start, you know. And this is going to come up with another issue. If Trump does win in November, there's going to be a big tariff on China. And it'll be interesting to see if that EV market bleeds into ours. I mean, people are expecting the price of electric vehicles to go down tremendously as China begins to import. But Biden slapped a tariff on it. And if if Trump wins, you're going to see a whole other round of tariffs on it. I want to give a shout out to Vance again. He was a Trump economist and I interviewed him. That should be coming out tomorrow or the next day. One of the key things that he said is he did, don't look for all these Trump tariffs to kick in nearly as easy. They're not as easy as he is saying. And he helped do the first ones. So I don't think we're going to be tariffing anytime soon. No, I don't. I don't think so either. Governor Newsom. Governor Newsom's unpopularity might have something to do with his extreme mandates that make life unaffordable. As I look at this article from Ronald Stein, and I have really enjoyed my conversations with Ronald. You need to follow his information will be in the show notes. I've read his books. He is the Pulitzer Prize nominee on clean energy adaptations. He is absolutely a uh, great resource. In California, the economy depends on affordable, reliable, and cleaner electricity fuels. Unfortunately, policymakers are driving up California's electric and gas prices, and California now has the highest electricity and fuel prices in the nation. Governor Newsom remains oblivious to the fact that mandatory emissions just in wealthy countries to achieve net zero is a fuel's, fool's game. The governor is also remains. Uh, remains reluctant and incapable of participating in conversations about basic energy literacy questions. Well said. China, India, and Indonesia are three of the largest emitting generators, same as countries that do not have the financial wherewithal or technical capabilities to reduce or capture anything. I'll tell you what, Ronald just hits it right out of the park. And there's a graphic in here, Miss Producer, if you could bring this up. Regular gasoline and diesel, and take a look at that cost difference. California fuel is $2 more expensive than that in Mississippi. And look at the gasoline and the taxes, 14 and 15%. I mean, California just taxes it right on top of it. California's growing dependency on other nations for its crude oil is a serious national security risk for America since the state is home to nine international airports and 41 military airports and three of the largest shipping ports in America. This is a national security risk. And not only does California buy from China, they're going to be buying more diesel and gasoline on some rumblings that I've been hearing. Don't have the ability to talk about that yet, but this is despicable what Governor Newsom is doing. Just thought I'd share my personal opinion on that one. Let's talk about Google. Let's roll over to Google. I'm not a Google fan. Just thought I'd share that with you. Google falling short of the importance on climate target sites, electricity needs of AI. Google has gone woke. If you're not aware, three years ago, Google set an ambitious plan to address climate change by going to net zero, meaning it would release no more climate changing gases into the air moves by 2030. Here's where I find it in very hypocrisy. They said that they were, I remember seeing on Chrome where they were carbon neutral since 2003 or whatever the date was on there. And that was lying. So you can be a hypocrite and a liar and still be big tech. 
but rather than declining its emissions, emissions grew in 13% in 2023 over the year compared to the baseline of 2019 emissions have soared 48%. Google cited the artificial intelligence and the demand it puts on data centers, which requires massive amounts of electricity for last year's growth. This is a great article, and it really elevates the fact that the data centers and big tech are going to have microgrids and the consumer grids are going to be left bare. We are going to need very good Department of Energy management of the grid and not incompetent buffoons that are running our uh, Department of Energy right now. We need an upgrade to the Department of Energy in order to keep the grid rolling. Did I just say that? I was just kidding. No, I'm not. Thank <laughs> you.